All right, so I wanted to show you how to create a program that interacts with the database, allows you to use inserts, deletes, selects, and updates, all using the ADO framework, uh, ADO.NET framework. And I already have a database, so let me show you the database. The database just has a pet shop, is the name of the database. It has inventory as its one table. Inventory has product ID, title, cost, sale price, and quantity for each of the items in that table. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and create this product or this project. So first I want to make a Windows form app and this Windows form app is going to be my pet shop. I'm gonna call my pet shop the Bunny Barn because that's it's a bunny shop. So bunny barn. And then once it opens up, I can go ahead and make sure I have my connections ready. So I go up to tools and I go to the NuGet package manager, manage NuGet packages for solution. And I want to add the Microsoft Data SQL client. So I go over to browse, type in Microsoft Data SQL client. I select this one. I want to install it for this project and I can install it for the latest if that works or a different version if that one does not work. Go ahead and click OK for the preview the changes and accept and then it starts doing the installation which will take a minute or so. After installation is complete you can close the NuGet solution right here and then you are ready to start creating your form. So I'm going to go over here to the toolbox and I'm going to add a list view because I like the list view. List view right here and drag it right here and this make it nice and big. And then I might maybe I'll change the shape of this form a little bit so it's a little smaller here and um, maybe shrink this one a little bit and I'll add more later. But for now, I'm just going to start with this. And then the form itself, I'm going to go ahead and name the form. So you find where it has the name right here. And you change it to... Actually, I can leave that in the same. I want to find the text. So in the behavior, let's see, in the appearance, there we go. Text. I'm going to change this to uh, Bunny Barn Inventory. All right, that changes. And then I can go ahead and change this list view's name because I don't really want the list view to be, well, what list view one. I'm going to change it to LST uh, Inven. Actually, just do I in list. LST INV. Make it nice and short. I also want to at the same time change the way it appears because I don't want uh, large icons. I want to change the large icons to details. Once I'm over here, I can go ahead and change the columns that show up. So I'm going to add some columns in here. So the first column I want to show up is the product ID number. So I'll call that product ID number. And then I'm going to add another column and I'm going to take this one and I'm going to make this one the title. And I'll make the title a little bit bigger so I'm going to get 200. And then I'm going to add another one and I'm going to change this one to the cost. And I'm going to add another one and change this to the sale price. And then I'm going to add another one and I'm going to change this one to the quantity. And click OK. And you can see how much space each one is. These are 60s and this middle one is 200. And we can adjust them inside the inventory or the column modification section. Now I'm going to go ahead and make it so we can connect the database. So we go over to the app config. And we can see a bunch of things in here. And in the configuration section, I can go ahead and add something. So I'm going to go ahead and add a connection strings tag. OK. 
connection strings. And inside of my connection strings, I can add a name for a connection string. So I'll add this name. The name of it is going to be my pet shop string. So that's the string to, well, connect to the pet shop. So I'm going to go ahead and create a connection string in here. Connection string equals. And I need a data source first of all. And the data source is going to my database, which happens to be the SQL Express server. So I'll do local host slash SQL Express. Next, I want to tell the catalog, the initial catalog I'm going to be connecting to, which is the database. So initial catalog equals, and if I look back at the database, you can see the name of the database is Pet Shop. So I'll use Pet Shop right here. Next, because there is a problem where the server might be issuing self-signed certificates or other certificates I don't trust, I'm just going to manually override that with a trust server certificate equals true. That way it will trust the certificate even if it's a self-signed or something else. Then I want integrated security equal to true as well. So now I have all of my connection string built and I'm ready to actually use the connection string when I use it somewhere else. So I'll save that, go back over to my form and I will double click on my form right here. And then I have this load. Now I don't want to load it directly. I could, I could put things directly in there, but I want to create a separate method that I can call again and again. So I'll do a, private void load uh, list view list view yeah load list view and then it doesn't really do anything but it just kind of loads it so before I load the list view it's good to have my string available so I'm going to retrieve that string from right here and I will do a string. Uh, my connection string is be con str. And this connection string is going to be retrieved from my configuration manager. Now, I don't have a way to talk to the configuration manager directly yet. So I'm going to add that up here. So using, um, and this is system configuration. I also need to do SQL statements. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So the using Microsoft Microsoft data SQL client. All right. So those are both ready and available. So my connection string is right here and I'm going to finish getting the connection string. So I'll do configuration manager dot connection strings. And that's basically kind of like an array. And so I'm going to be grabbing the string, which was pet shop string. So I'll paste it right here. And so that goes to that record. I'm grabbing the connection string from that and putting it into my string con str. So let me get that private. So private to this class. At this point, I can now go ahead and retrieve the data and just pull it in. So I will do a connection to that server. And the way I do that is by making an SQL connection. So SQL connection, and I'll call this con for connection. It was new SQL connection. 
and I'm going to pass it the connection string, so con str. Once the connection has been basically configured, I can go ahead and open up the connection. And whenever you open a connection, you want to also close it just so you have it figured out and there, so you're ready. And then in between it, you want to do all the work with the connection. So I figure out what am I grabbing from that connection? Well, there are multiple pieces of data I want, right? So I'm displaying the product ID, the title, the cost, the sale price, and the quantity. So I can create an SQL statement. So a string SQL text, and I'm going to call the, or make this a select. And I want the product. ID, the title, the cost, the sale price, and I want the quantity for each item. And I do that from inventory. So there's my string. Now I need to take this string and my connection, put it together into an SQL command. So I've got this SQL. SQL command and the SQL command, let's call it CMD, is a new SQL command and I pass my SQL command, the SQL text, and I pass it my connection. At this point, I can go ahead and call that command and work with it. But this is all about loading the list view. And so I want to first clear the list view. So my list view was called LST, LST INV. And I'll take the items and I will clear it. And then I want to populate it with all the new data. So I do a for loop based on a reader. So I need a reader, SQL data reader. And the SQL data reader is going to call it reader. And it is going to be based on the command CMD. And I'm going to execute the reader. Then I can go over and parse or basically walk over all the data. So while reader read I have data to put in there now the first item I put into that list view is the product ID and the first item I put in there I put in as the item as just a new item um, add and I put the product ID and the product ID comes across as an object, but I want to take that object and turn that object into, well, that, as a string thing. So I take this reader and it is the product ID and I want to convert that to a string and put it in here. Now for the other items in this reader, um, the other columns, I need to kind of keep track of which line I'm on. So I will just store that as an integer int i for an index. And then my index is going to be starting at zero. So I'll do equals zero. And then I go through and I put these things as sub items. So LST items and then i. Then my sub item, I'm adding my reader. This one is product, not product view, this is um, actually the title. And I make that to string as well. And then I do the same thing with each other column. So there are four other columns. So there's the title, the cost, 
the sale price and the quantity. After that, I want to increment my index. So I'll do I plus plus so that the next one will be one or two and just keep upgrading. So I do that and that should populate out the entire entire table with all of the items. So at this point, it's probably a good idea to make sure your connections are correct and make sure everything's working correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and change everything or save everything and run it and make sure that it is displaying properly. So I can see that the there's nothing populated and I'm thinking about it and it's probably because this form never actually called the load. So I'll do a load list view and then I'll go ahead and run this again. All right, now I can see that I have all of my stuff, my bunny barn there, different kinds of rabbits. I have rabbit food and other rabbit products. I can go ahead and close this. All right, so that allows me to list things. Now I go back to my design and say, well, that's great that I can list them, but what if I want to actually, I don't know, add things or remove things? So let's go ahead and add products now. So I go to toolbox and I'm going to have a label and I will say change this one's text to be product ID. And then I will go over here and have a text box. Let's move that one down a bit. And then I will have another label. Up here. And this will be the title. Let's go ahead and write, add the rest of the uh, labels. This one is the cost. This one is the sale price. And then the last one is the quantity. All right. So I'll stick one all over here for now. Actually, I'll put the title right here. And then I'll have another text box. Move it a bit. Make it a little bigger. And have another text box. Cost. And another text box. Sales price right here. And then the last one you'll have is a text box as well. And put quantity over here. And then I want some kind of a button that actually adds them. So I'll put a button. That should add things and then clear everything out. Okay. So let's go ahead and name these. So my product one, we don't worry about the text that's inside of it because it should have no text in it to begin with. But you can um, go to design and change this text box to be txt uh, product ID. This will be txt cost. This will be TXT title. This will be TXT sale price. 
price. This one is TXT quantity. And then the button, I can call it BTN, and then we add. Okay. So at this point, um, I just need to add a label for this button. So we're pretty much ready to go. All right, so if you type in a product ID number here, you type in a title, you type in a cost, you type in a sales price, and you type in a quantity, and then click add, then it should do something. So I'll go ahead and double click this add, and it creates this method right here, and then I can do an add statement right here. So how do I do that? Well, we have this all this stuff up here, so I still want that same connection, I still want to open, I still want SQL, I still want to be able to make a command, so we'll paste that right here. And then we also want to make sure we close our connection at the end. So we got con close. But our SQL statement is not going to be this one right here. We're going to change our statement a bit. And I want to get some variables first. So I'm going to have a string. And this is going to be my product. Actually, let's have an integer. A, uh, and we'll put everything inside of a try statement so that if it fails, we just kind of don't do anything. So, we can do try and then we can in a catch for the exception. And then we can just basically do nothing there. And ideally, you'd probably actually kind of open your connection outside of the try statement. And let's actually open it outside. And then close it. Well, I guess you could have it um, one on each side. But you want to close the connection maybe after it. All right. So we have this uh, SQL statement here. And we want to take this and do insert insert into inventory I call it and um, you can either uh, pass this as is because you want the names or you can um, Do it a little bit differently. So I'm inserting that and I give it all the um, column names so they can make sure they're in the same order. This helps you in case things get rearranged somehow in the database. And so I got that. Insert those. And then I pass it the values I wanted to go in there. And so I have a little space right here at the end. So you know that works. I'll do values and in here I'm going to actually list the values with um, symbols that can be replaced so product ID becomes at um, product ID and title becomes at title and the Cost becomes at cost. The sales price becomes at sale price. And the quantity becomes at quantity. All right. This makes it much easier to work with the SQL command because when I generate this command, I can then use parameters and swap out individual pieces otherwise I have to take this thing this all the quotes and I have to like have a quote here that ends here and then I have to have like the product ID number and then I have to like have another quote again and, and have the comma and a space and maybe a single quote and then 
double quotes again. It becomes a big mess. It's so much easier just to be able to swap things in and out. All right. So next I work at my parameters. So what are parameters? Well, I can take each one of these parameters and put them in there as an SQL parameter. So SQL parameter. And there's a couple of different constructors for an SQL parameter. I can have a name and a value or just a parameter uh, just by itself and then go ahead and change things. But I want to actually make it much easier and cleaner. And so I'm going to take this SQL command and I want to CMD. And then instead of this, I'm going to use an add for parameters. So I do parameters, parameters dot add. And then I can do a much easier way to do it because then I can just add the parameter directly or I can do, so do this new SQL parameter like that. Or I even have the option to do it even simpler. Instead of doing the add, I can do add with um, value. If I want to pass it in all the way. And so this one I can do. So the first parameter is going to be product ID. And I pass it the value, which is going to be my product ID. So where is my product ID? Well, that is something I need to grab earlier. So this is why I have a try statement. So my int product ID equals, and I grab it from that text box, txt product ID, but this comes in as text. And so I want to convert it into an integer. So I do an int 32 parse right there. Grab the text and parse it. Now you have to worry about some things being wrong, but that's okay. And maybe it'll crash if people are missing values. You can do some error checking to make it safer. But this is more about how to insert, delete, update, and select from the database, right? So now I've got my title, and that one is going to be my txt title. So I don't actually need to create a new one, but I, I can do that. Um, Next, I have a double, and this one is my cost. And that's going to be my txt cost. But I want to parse it. I'll parse it as double. And I'll parse the text of that. Then I'll do a double sale price equals double parse txt sale price dot txt. And the last one is the quantity. So it'll be an int quantity equals and int 32 parse txt quantity dot text. All right. So I will get the term SQL statement. All right. So now I can go ahead and put this uh, product ID in here. So I've created a variable. And the next one is a CMD parameters add with value. And this one is going to be title. And 
And I can just do that with all the rest of them. It's just... So yeah, title, cost, sale price, and quantity. Make sure I update the associated variables as well. And quantity. Now, before, when I executed the statement, I ran, as you can see up here, an execute, uh, execute reader. Now, execute reader has a return value, which is great, but sometimes you don't actually want a return value. You just want to be able to run it. So a non-query execution is what I want to do. So I will execute the statement. And I can do that with a CMD execute reader, but execute non query. And that will run. And I can close this and see if it all works. So I save that. And I go back to my design. And now I'm going to run it. And I go ahead and I can see the last product ID number is 30, so I add 31. And I go ahead and add a title. So this might be um, some other um, product. So maybe a dish, rabbit dish. And maybe the cost is uh, $2 and we're gonna sell it for $5. And we got a quantity of five. So I go ahead and add. And we don't know if anything actually happened. But we can rerun the program and see if there is a new item. And there is, in fact, a new item 31 right here. So what you probably want to do at this point after you have run this is after you close this, you probably want to refresh the list up here. So load the list view, which is why you have it. So you close that connection and the end of the ad. Load the, reload the page. All right. So that's good. Next thing I want to do is I want to be able to delete an item. So when you want to delete an item, you have to be able to figure out which item is being selected. So if I run this thing right here, and so I can add another item in here. So 32, maybe a trash can. And then you decide, you know, I really don't actually want to sell trash cans. So you add this, it refreshes the view. You can see the trash can shows up. And you can click it. But what do you do with it? Usually you can use the selected item. So I'm going to add, an, add another button here. So make this a little bigger and throw another button right here on the side. Obviously you'd want to make this thing look a little prettier, but we'll have this be the delete button. And then the delete button, uh, I want to give it a name as well. So under the design section, I would call this BTN delete. All right. So now this delete button, when I click it, I want it to delete whatever item is selected. So I got my LS list view, LST, INV, um, selected items. Hmm. So it gets the items that are selected in the control. And I want to figure out which item is selected. So if I get these selected items, 
and get an index, uh, I would just um, I would just do the first one that's selected, and I want to get the text of it. So I'm just going to um, just show you what it shows you if I click this button. So I'll do a message box and do a show and I'll pass out this text. So if I run this, pull this in here, I select number two and press delete, it says two. If I press 10 and press delete, it says 10. So you can see it's sending me a text of the product ID. And this is important because it makes it easier to delete something. So if I have the text, then all I need to do is just convert that to an integer and we're good to go. So I do a, a try statement. And I want to have my int product ID equal to cut that out right there paste it right here and I'll do an int 32 parse and hopefully this all works well now if there's nothing selected it could crash so just be aware of the, that you just need to catch it um, or prevent it from doing something if there is nothing selected so I do a catch and there we go and I want to, once again, do a statement. So I will go ahead and um, open the connection, just like I have right here. And down here, I put this connection right here. And at the end, I want to close the connection. And I want to also create an SQL statement, so a string. And I want to run a command as well. So I will, and it's going to be executed as a non query. So I'll go ahead and just grab all that, even though we don't need most of it. So I've got this thing already parsed out. I paste this. Um, what I'm going to do is a delete statement instead. So I'll do delete from inventory. from inventory and then I want to have a where clause do where product ID equals product ID and then delete the rest of that so I want delete from inventory where product ID equals product ID I create my SQL statement and then I remove all the rest of this stuff because it doesn't exist. Why well, I don't care about it. So really all I'm trying to do is find the right one to delete. And again, this is a non-query. So I'm not trying to get anything back. I just want to take the product ID that, or the one that's selected and then I want to generate the statement and then execute it and then I'm done. However, just like in the case above, I want to reload the page after I am done. So I'll copy that and paste it right here. So that if something is deleted, it disappears completely. So I'll go ahead and start this and pull this down. And then if I say I want to delete the trash can, I click on this one and press delete. And then look down here and number 32 is gone. So that is how you add or I do a delete statement. And the last thing would be to do an update statement. So this one I need to find a way to populate all the data and I might need to do a special select statement in order to do that. So I am going to have back to my form, I can have an update instead of an add right here. So I add another button and 
Maybe I'll make this one the edit button. And then I'll change the add button to be a save button. So let's go ahead and change the add button to be save. And normally it's going to be new data, but in some cases it might be old data. So change it to edit. And then I can scroll down and change this button to be btn edit. So when you press edit, if something is selected, I want to load all these fields down here. So I'll take this edit button and I can grab all those fields because they are all saved right here. Actually, no, they're not saved right there. I want to put them into those fields. So I need to figure out which one's being selected. So the one being selected would be the one that has the product ID number in it. So I'll go ahead and select all this right here and put it down in this edit statement. So what I'm doing is I'm opening the connection. I am then trying to parse out and figure out what the number is because I want to retrieve that one. I want to close this afterwards. So call on close. All right. In addition to opening it up, cash, I want to actually retrieve the data on that individual one. And then, uh, So what do I want? I want this product ID number information. So I'm going to create a, an SQL string once again, just like this one. And copy that and paste this. So this one is going to be a select statement. Select from inventory. where product ID equals product ID, and you all want to select everything. So the same thing I select up above in my select statement. I want to select all these things right here. So it gets kind of uh, more complex this way. All right, so I'm back down to the edit, and I'm going to be selecting these items right here from inventory, where product ID equals product ID. I want to then swap out the product ID and use the one that I have this variable right here, product ID. And this time I want to execute a scalar. So the scalar is a single, a single one as opposed to multiple ones. I could just do a big long one, but then I have a whole list of things and I just want just one and there should only be one. So I'll do CMD execute scalar. So it should be just one single thing back. Actually, probably not a scalar, maybe an actual reader because a uh, scalar would be just a single item and we're getting a whole row. Anyway. So we do the reader, execute the reader, and um, we have all the values we're grabbing up here. And so we're going to go ahead and just grab all these, and instead of putting them into um, into the list view, we're going to go ahead and put them into the field. All right, so take this and we want to take the data here and my txt product ID equals and the reader does not have, I need to have a reader. So SQL data reader equals 
and then see my reader, which is right here. There we go. All right, so we got the reader, and the reader is doing a read. And then the reader is putting it into the text box. All right. I think that's right. Okay, so I just want to take all the rest of these things and kind of clear them out. And then put them into the text boxes that they need to be in. All right. Okay, so this one's txt uh, title text. This one is going to be the txt cost text. This one is going to be the txt uh, sale price dot text. And the last one is going to be the txt quantity. Dot text. All right. So at this point, if I run this as it is by itself, it should take the data. Whenever I click the edit button, it should take whatever is in whatever is selected, read it in there, and then populate all of that information. So I go ahead and save that. Of course, that will cause all kinds of problems if I were to add it, but we'll go ahead and run it and figure out where it is that I missing code. So I got the reader here. I think I might have missed something. Closing that. Okay, I forgot to close the method here. All right. Oh, because it took the try and there we go. All right, so I go ahead and run this. And then I take number the rabbit dish and I click edit. And it loads the rabbit dish in here. However, if I save it, it's going to have problems because rabbit dish is a key that already exists. Oh. Didn't seem to actually have problems. Uh, let's see if I change the name to rabbit um, bowl. If I click save, it doesn't change anything. It just, well, it's still dish. All right. So it's a, uh, it must be because it is doing an exception and it is being caught when I do the save. So if I do an add button right here, and now I want to figure out how do I change it so that it is instead of doing an, an insert, it is doing an update. Let's see. I think this is right here. All right. So we can change this um, SQL statement so that it does an update instead of an insert. If it has uh, a duplicate key. Let's go and see how we do that. One of the easiest ways to solve the duplicate problem is to generate two different statements. So I'm going to go ahead and generate two statements. One is going to be the update, and then I'm going to re get a return value when I run the statement and see how many rows are affected. If none are affected, then I'm going to do an insert. So I will um, create a new statement right here. So this is SQL string um, SQL the, the first one is going to be the update so SQL update equals and I can actually um, take all this stuff right here kind of copy it up here 
All right, so, oops. All right, so you update, update. And then uh, I can take out this stuff right here, actually. So update inventory, and I'm going to set each of these things instead. So set. And I will do uh, product. Actually, product. I don't want to change product ID. So change that one. Set title. Equal to title. Need cost. Do a uh, cost equals cost. Do a sale price equals sale price, and then I'll do a quantity equals quantity. Make sure I take out this piece right here. So I do all those things where, where, and this is where I put the product ID in here. Product ID equals at product ID. So this statement right here is an update. So it just changes um, inventory and sets the title, the cost, sales, price, and quantity to what the values are when the product ID matches. So I'll have this statement first, and then I can take all these same uh, SQL substitutions with parameters, put them right there. And then after that, I can run my execute statement, but I want to get back, so this is update, the number of rows that were affected. So I copy that. And then I say, put this here. And then int count equals there, there. So if no rows were affected, that means that the update failed. If the update fails, then that means I need to do an insert because you can't update. And this CMD, I guess I can call it CMD one. Change all these to one. Not to one. And then this one to well, I can leave it the same. Alright. So if count is less than one. Then I run all of this stuff right here because I'm doing my insert then. There are other SQL languages that are a little cleaner and do things much better, but we do what we can. All right. So it's either an update or an insert. So I go ahead and I check this out. I look at, if I click the add button, I open the connection, I get all these pieces of information right here. I try an update first. If the update is able to update something, that means that the product ID matched something that existed. And if the product ID matched something that existed, it will return the number that were changed. And if that number is greater than, oh, if count is, yeah, if that number is less than one, that means that nothing was changed, in which case I need to do an insert statement. So we will go ahead and run this. Save it and run it. And now I'm going to go here. I want to change this from rabbit dish to rabbit bowl and then I will click save and it changes it to rabbit bowl and the nice thing is if I click save again it'll just change it back to rabbit bowl again 
And if I wanted to add a new one in here, so if I have a rabbit dish as well, I could save that as 32, and then it will show up both the rabbit bowl and the rabbit dish. So this, you can see, we can do, um, we have an insert, we have a select, we have an update, and we have a delete. So all of these things are there. And if you made it to the end of this video, then congratulations, it's really quite long. But at least you can see how everything is done. Uh, my advice would be to put everything else in a separate class, keep things more organized in this, and do a lot more error checking. But at least this should give you an idea of how to do all of those pieces using ADO.net.